This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. What? You got a plan. I am on a six year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking. So join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week we are heading back over to the African continent and the Royal Cape Yards in Durban, South Africa for a look at their flagship, the Royal Cape Majestic 570 Fly. Today we will 1. Review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels. Two, do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? Three, navel gaze at an innovation and or adjustment that might make life aboard a little easier. Four, have a look at the used market for three to five year old pre-owned comparables. And five, give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. All this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art and ideas. What a great way to spend 30 minutes, so let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head east across the continent and the Atlantic to the west coast of France and the home of last week's guest yacht in Rockford at the Yards of Nauditech. Heading all the way down the European continent and further southeast down the African continent, we arrive at the home of this week's guest yacht at the Durban Yards of Royal Cape Catamarans in South Africa. Finally, we hop southwest to the stunning Stallenbach wine region near Cape Town and the home of this week's wine pairing, Rassilion Pandesillation okay. Shiraz Blend 2020. Pandesillation is a blend of 88% Shiraz and 12% Grenache Noir. Fruit for this blend was carefully selected from two younger blocks of vineyards on the north facing slopes and elevation at an elevation of 170 to 210 meters chosen for their soft, ripened fruit and tannins. The Shiraz grapes ripened in deep Hutton and Cloverly soils, which is granite derived and have a high gravel content ensuring balanced growth and fruit that ripened at lower sugar levels. The Grenache was planted in 2008 on northwest facing slopes, producing smaller bunches with intense flavors. Efficient canopy management practices such as suckering and tipping ensured sufficient sunlight penetrated the, the canopy. Both parcels of grapes ripened with a natural high acidity and lower pH level. The grapes were hand-picked in late February, very early in the morning, which allowed for the grapes to be delivered cold to the cellar, where they were hand-sorted, some de-stemmed and lightly crushed, and others whole bunch fermented. The two cultivars were vinified separately. Fermentation took place in open fermenters for the Shiraz and a closed fermenter for the Grenache. After a short maceration period of seven days after primary fermentation for the Shiraz and three days for the Grenache, both wines were matured for 18 months in old 300 liter French oak barrels. Melolactic fermentation took place in stainless steel tanks. The wines were blended prior to bottling. Mmm, that's nice. Cheers. Let's have a look at that boat. Having a look at the Majestic 570, you know, um, I got to say, it's not my aesthetic joy looking at this vessel. Uh, it, it really is very dated on the exterior. I'm sure it's highly functional. Well, I know it is. I've met the owners and the builders. They're a beautifully built yacht, very sturdy, and the interior is outstanding. But unfortunately, 
Fellas, it's time to get a new mold. This is like putting new wine into an old wine skin, and sooner or later it's gonna have the same poor result. Uh, I think you're underselling yourself and doing yourself a disservice right now on the aesthetics externally. Okay, let's have a look at our comparatives. So we're today looking at the Lagoon 55, the Nisna 550, the Majestic 570, and the Bally 5.4. Uh, you know, all of them uh, have uh, a, a reasonable pro uh, profile, again, except for the Majestic 570 Fly. It, it is just so dated and so angular and so chunky. Uh, you know, it neither has the avant-garde aesthetic of the wave uh, nor, uh, you know, lines of anything sort of classic, if there is such a thing in a, in a catamaran. Uh, the Bally 5.4, it is what it is, a uh, bit boxy, um, but not so bad that it overshadows the sheer magnitude of the internal uh, benefits, the forward cockpit, the fly lounge, all of that good stuff. Um, I, I, again, we'll get into the really good things about the Majestic, but it certainly isn't the external looks. Hopping down onto the cabin top, um, you can see the uh, fly bridges here on the uh, Lagoon 55. It is expansive. Um, and you've got a wonderful sunning area out there. The Nisna 550, again, really cool. I have seen uh, for the first time this Nisna 550 without the fly bridge, uh, but it does have a fly lounge similar to a Leopard. Um, with a mid-level uh, helm, uh, again, similar to the Leopard, and wow, does it cut a beautiful line from the outside. Uh, the Majestic 570 Fly, uh, you have that uh, fully covered uh, fly bridge, and you're going to see some real innovations with the solar on top here. Um, it, it extends out. Um, it, it's pretty darn cool. Uh, there is massive uh, deck area out in front of you when you're standing on that flybridge. It almost looks like your own private aircraft carrier. Um, and, but again, there, there's no sort of um, factory cushions to turn into a faux cockpit or really do much creative with all that real estate other than grab your beanbag chairs. The Valley 5.4, again, an epic flybridge. Um, with massive lounging space, uh, both for traditional dining as well as for sunning. Um, and you've got, you know, all of that space. And then you got, the, if that's not enough, you've got that um, closed in uh, front um, uh, trampoline area there. Hopping down now into the cockpit and the saloons on these. Um, I mean, your Lagoon uh, 55 is epic in both areas, as well as the full front cockpit, which is almost a full cockpit and has that really innovative uh, convertible top that slides back behind the couches. Uh, the Nisna 550, um, really quite a, uh, uh, an extensive um, aft cockpit area. Um, and then, of course, inside, it has even more space uh, than the Lagoon 55, just square footage, I would say. Um, the uh, Majestic 570, a, a very nice, large aft cockpit. Uh, ironically, the 530 feels a little bigger, I guess, because it doesn't have the, uh, the real estate up top uh, encroaching. Uh, but uh, the 570, certainly no slouch, uh, beautiful areas for entertaining, beautiful areas uh, for barbecuing. Uh, in, the, in the actual saloon, uh, the finish work is gorgeous. Um, but yeah, and th this is where it really starts to come into its own. The Bali 5.4, again, that highly innovative garage door in the back there. Um, I'm, I'm sort of betwixt and between and whether I like the idea of my aft cockpit being my saloon as well. However, the five, uh, the 5.4 is big enough that they actually have that, uh, aft settee and you really do have an outdoor entertaining area, even with your garage door down beyond that, 
nothing but ups here. I mean, you've got a spectacular sized galley, an amazing internally accessed forward cockpit and that full uh, covered um, front netting area there with acres and acres of entertainment space. As we look at the uh, tonnage here, you can see the Nysna 550 is the lightest at 19.6 tons. And that's, that's, that's only the start of the surprises with this NISDA. When I was putting together this uh, set of data, I really raised an eyebrow here. Um, next up is going to be your Bally 5.4, which is, again, is a bit surprising given the size and its production cat, a 20.8 ton. Um, next is your Majestic, a 22 ton. Uh, and the biggest of the bunch, of course, is the Lagoon 55 at 27.7. Although, knowing the way the Lagoon and the, the, the Majestic are both built, I'm really surprised. I, I, I don't know what Lagoon is putting on that boat to make it 27.7 tons, quite honestly. Heading down into the accommodations, uh, the Lagoon is just palatial. Uh, all the thwartship berths, all full walk around. Um, you know, if I've got the, the, the four cabin version on here and it, you know, it just goes on for days in the owner's hull. Um, the Nysna 550, uh, they've got a thwart ship, uh, at the bow, similar to a, um, balance. Um, and then they've got the, uh, four aft, uh, with pretty good walk around space, uh, in, in the, uh, after the, uh, the hulls, uh, the Majestic. Again, uh, somewhat similar in that they, they have the fore aft in the aft, and then they've got uh, a thwart ship in the bow. But they're, as you can see, they're not mirroring. They're a little offset there. Um, but, you know, a reasonable amount of space. It doesn't, it doesn't feel as expansive as the Lagoon 55. I'm not sure what the space management that they've done there. Obviously, you've got an entire hull. Uh, oh, no, sorry, you don't have an entire hull. You, you have your owner's uh, hull there um, on the port side, and it, it's quite extensive um, and probably the same size, if not a little larger than Lagoon 55. It just doesn't feel that way somehow, and you'll see that when we get into the video. The, Val the Valley 5.4 um, palatial is an understatement here. Uh, you've got uh, one complete hull dedicated to the owner's suite, full uh, access out into the cockpit from the owner's suite. Uh, I mean, you, you could run laps in that thing. Uh, the the uh, head is absolutely massive um, on the, and then that still leaves you two uh, palatial uh, athwart ship, full walk around berths for your guests. So really quite something. As far as the total um, platform goes, uh, you're looking on the Nysna at the, at the sort of the largest, I would say, at, at uh, square footage, 16.83 uh, long by 9.1 wide. Um, your next one is probably going to be your, your Lagoon 55 at 16.4 by 9. And uh, then it's going to be, it's a toss-up between the Majestic and the Bally 5.4. Heading into the numbers, going across the top line, you can see the Lagoon uh, has the lowest base at about 1.1 million euro, uh, followed by the Bally very closely at, again, about 1.1, just a hair over. Uh, then you've got your Nysna 550 at uh, 1.46, 1 1.5, and then your Majestic at 1.6, 1 1.7. 1 uh, now, when it comes to the uh, sail away, we'll touch on that a little later, but the traditional um, habit of adding 50% uh, to the base does not apply to uh, the two South African brands. They come very, very well equipped. So in both cases, I, I sort of added um, like a hundred grand US. Uh, on the, um, the Nysna, I couldn't find more than 129,000 total in options you could possibly add to it. Uh, the Majestic 570, very similar. Um, so they, they don't follow the same rule. So your, um, your sale away results are, are very different than the base price might indicate. As we go to uh, length overall, 
uh, it's the uh, Majestic in the lead at 57 feet. Then uh, uh, length at the waterline, it is the Nisna at uh, 54.8 feet. The Beam, it's the Nisna at 29.75 feet. The Draft, it's the Majestic at um, 4.6 feet um, <clears throat> with the Bali and the Nisna uh, at about the same, around 4.95 feet, something like that. Uh, and then the Lagoon is 5 feet. Um, the displacement, of course, we've already touched on, is the Nisna at uh, 39,200 pounds, uh, followed by the Bali at 41,601, followed by the uh, Majestic at 48,502, uh, with a massive add-on for the Lagoon at 61,079 pounds. Upwind sail area, again, it's the Nisna in the lead at 2,112 square feet, followed by the um, Lagoon at 1,948, followed by the Majestic 550 at 1,936, and uh, finally the Bali at the uh, 1,701. Heading down to tankage, Bali has it all the way with 1,200 liters of both fuel and water. Looking at some of the more uh, technical details, hull materials uh, and hull construction. Uh, it's definitely the Nisna 550 in the lead with hand-laden vacuum bag, quadraxle, fiberglass cloth with pure vinyl ester resin and gel coat. Uh, as well as um, using a one-inch thick Arex closed cell foam core uh, and then four layers of international gel shield barrier coat below the waterline. Uh, next up, really there is not much next up. They're all about the same. You're looking at vacuum-infused polyester um, and the only difference uh, might be the Majestic with its monolithic to the waterline. Um, now, it has balsa core above, so debatable on that one. Uh, Bali is using uh, vinyl ester with uh, pure um, uh, foam core. Uh, and uh, Lagoon is using um, polyester uh, with uh, foam below the waterline and balsa above the waterline. So uh, putting the foam out of it, I would put Nisna 550 as number one and uh, Majestic 570 as number two, uh, given that monolithic uh, um, to the waterline on that one. Uh, looking at the performance indicators, sail area to displacement or indic indicators of power. Uh, it's the Nisna 550 at 29.3, and it's quite a distance between it and anything else. Next up is going to be your Majestic Fly at 23.3, your Bali at 22.67, and your uh, Lagoon at 20.1. The displacement to hull length, this is heaviness. And again, it's like golf, lowest score wins. And again, winning is the Nisna 550 at 105.2. Uh, next up is going to be the Bali at 123.69, the Majestic at 137.5, and Big Bertha, the Lagoon, at 175.4. Comfort ratio, of course, is, ends up uh, the best on the Lagoon at uh, 18.9. And then hull speed we're looking uh, at the Nisna at 9.94 because of that length at the waterline they've got. Looking at the uh, KSP, which is an indicator of speed uh, at wind of 10 knots, uh, you come out with the Nisna on top with a stunning uh, uh, percentage of wind speed capability of 86% uh, head and shoulders above everybody else. Uh, the next up is going to be the Bali at 7, 74%, which again isn't terribly bad, especially given what the Bali is. Then the Majestic, just a hair behind at 73%, and of course, our Deer Lagoon at 66%. Now, just to put 86% wind speed into perspective, I thought I would bring up the chart of the big boys, uh, the Seacat, 
uh, 56, the ORC 57, the Kinetic 54, and the HH 55, the, the monster performers in this area. Um, so uh, we said the Nisna 550 had a uh, KSP showing, 80, uh, it, showing it to be an 86% wind speed boat. Well, if you look across here, you've got the Kinetic 54, which is a pure carbon boat, uh, at 81%. Then you've got the Seacat 56, which is a lot of carbon and all epoxy, at 88%. Um, now, at the HH and the ORC, I mean, these are Ferraris. These are Formula One racers. So you've got 94% and uh, a more than wind speed boat in the 57 at 112%. But I don't know about you, it really makes me raise an eyebrow at the exceptional performance of the Nisna 550. Okay, hopping on board. What would Sylvia say? Well, let's face it. I'd have to blindfold Sylvia and get her on board before she could even look at the outside because she'd turn this down right away. She wouldn't even let me buy a minivan because she didn't want to see it parked in the driveway. So, no, I, I, there's no way that I could walk around the outside first. I'd have to blindfold her, take her inside, let her see all the benefits inside this, and then have her come out and watch her face when she saw the outside. But I mean, look at that hydraulic um, um, tender lift. It is massive. Nice big sugar scoops. Um, you have a huge covered area uh, into your cockpit. You can see that there are already built-in um, uh, dive tank holders right there. One thing that I just love about this is the solid handrails all the way around this vessel. Beautifully done. Not to mention the sheer size of the barbecue on the back of this baby. It is really something to behold. But obviously here I was a tad entranced by uh, the nature of this hydraulic lift. It is, you could play a game of, of Canadian football on that thing. Uh, let's head up into the, uh, the, the cockpit. You can see all of your uh, clears are wrapped up and nicely contained there. Uh, nothing really hanging and looking sloppy. Massive, beautiful aft kitchen. Huge barbecue. Beautiful um, counter spaces so you could really do up a full meal back here. I mean, once you're on board, complete with the flexi teak, it really is a spectacular space. Look, you've even got your um, aft controls here, uh, which is something I haven't seen on uh, another single catamaran. So for your med mooring, this is absolutely ideal. Um, beautiful stainless work, huge and, and sturdy. Um, already included rod holders up there, as you can see. Um, and and you, they finished the underside of the um, of the bimini really nicely. Embedded lighting. Look at how comfortable uh, that lounging area is. And look, I mean, wouldn't you just love to curl up in there and go to sleep? Um, your stairway up to your flybridge is no little ladder. It is a full-on curving staircase, like some kind of mansion. Um, and the uh, table is not just some PVC table. It's a beautiful uh, Corian tabletop. Um, and I mean, again, the minute you get on board, if you could hop on board with your eyes closed and then open your eyes, you'd be in heaven. It's absolutely gorgeous. The curved lines, the some of the aesthetic details, absolutely beautiful. Now, I would have preferred to go with Flexi Teak all the way along here, um, but they've gone with an anti-slip in gray. Just love these solid rails. And it, I'm not sure if you quickly saw it, but you've got um, the drop-down access ladder off the side there as well. Beautifully, beautifully done. Um, big uh, hay rack on the lazy bag, uh, which would allow you some access down there and um, enclosed... Uh, areas for you to uh, climb up that uh, um, mast uh, safely, which is something I haven't seen anywhere else. Um, and again, as you come forward, you can see what I mean about freaking acres of front area. 
Uh, I'm a little surprised they haven't gone with some kind of a um, uh, uh, forward cockpit. I mean, they certainly have the space. Um, you can see uh, the headroom you've got in that flybridge there. It's quite extensive. Look at all of your storage on this boat. I mean, you know, if you want a round-the-world cruiser that's built like a Sherman tank with all the space you need, you've, you've certainly got it here. And uh, safety to spare uh, around access up that um, mast. Um, massive uh, uh, plates there for all of your, um, your, your rigging. Um, and uh, again, I, I, I'd almost put down false grass up here and put railings around it. It just seems almost absurd that this area isn't used somehow. <laughs> you, could, you could put an entire backyard lounging set up here. Uh, maybe that's what you should do. I don't know. It, 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 it does seem excessive when you're up here. It's just so massive. Now, it sure does create an easy flow in and out of this beautiful, huge flybridge. Uh, and, and again, remember, you also have the duplicated controls down on the, uh, the aft port area for your docking, if you want to, from down there. Um, so up here, uh, great sized winches, all your clutches, all your lines run back here, cup holders, uh, you don't just have a double seat there. You, you could have four people driving the boat with you right there. Um, and you have incredible visibility um, over the bow to your, your, your uh, two front bows. Um, not so much the back, but you have CCTV. Um, you've got wonderful lounging space back here, built-in speakers, nicely finished bimini bottom, uh, embedded lighting. You've got uh, fridges up here and all sorts of, of wonderful conveniences. Um, and, you know, it, it really is quite spectacular. Uh, let's have a, a, another glance out and around here just so you can get a sense of the shit. Look, look at that. You could land an F-18 on the front of this boat. It does seem a bit absurd, but there you have it. I hope you're enjoying uh, the presentations here. Man, these things take a lot of time to put together, gathering all these tables and trying to validate the data. I would really, really appreciate it if you could take some time and just subscribe set the bell, and share this out to a few other like-minded sailors. Uh, it doesn't cost you a thing, and it certainly would help the channel. We're coming up on 2,000. I'd love to see that escalate around the 10,000 mark. So if you can help us out, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Heading into a little navel-gazing, given the sheer scale of this vessel, it seems logical that we're going to have a quick look at a new technology that actually goes very nicely with the Volvo technology we were looking at um, a week or two ago. Uh, this is a surround view camera system by Garmin. You've got six or eight cameras scattered around the vessel, and especially with a flybridge, you can tuck them in there nicely. The system then stitches it together on the screen, similar to your luxury vehicles. Uh, you can set uh, that green line you saw a little bit ago there uh, is a settable um, bumper area. There it is again. You can see it there. You've also got other um, indicator lines, very similar to what, again, you have in your car as you go to back up. Um, you know, this really makes a lot of sense and isn't that complicated to do. To say we have the technology is, is, is nothing. So I think if I had a vessel like this, most assuredly, you would see me put that bit of tech on this vessel. Heading down these wonderful uh, circular staircases back into this expansive cockpit. We'll have a gander around and, you know, she opens up beautifully too here, uh, creating a nice flow from cockpit into saloon. And have a look around this saloon. Uh, I mean, first class, beautiful Corian, and not just a boring old white Corian, but it's sort of a granitish Corian. Uh, I'm not big on the bleached woods, but I mean, uh, you can choose whatever you want. And for what it is, it really is attractive. Massive um, settee there, dining area, beautiful island counter, 
you've got full-size dishwasher, you've got lots of refrigeration and freezer space, massive uh, stove there, uh, lots of, what did we got? One, two, three, four, five burner uh, oven top, uh, microwave, you name it, you've got it here, it's all there. Uh, you know, the lines of the, the, the dated lines of the exterior do creep into your sensibilities here with the front window shapes and such, but there you go. Heading down the stairs, uh, we're heading into the port hull, and um, you can see this is your guest hull. So uh, aft, you've got this beautiful twin room, but look at the sheer headspace you've got in here. Nobody is going to feel cramped or hard done by in this gorgeous, gorgeous cabin. You have lots of ventilation uh, over top, side, back, and then you have this epic, epic head. Look at the floor there. It's, it's a pebble style floor. It's absolutely gorgeous. And look at the, look at the materials and the finish on the, um, on the beautiful handrail there. Wonderful, wonderful pantry. I mean, again, as far as going around the world, you have all the space you'd ever want. And uh, here is your next uh, guest cabin. Uh, I mean, you got shelving, you've got uh, cupboards, you've got hanging lockers, you've got, uh, and, and then you've got this wonderful uh, athwartship. Now, here's the thing though uh, it's an athwartship with no access up the sides. So it is. Um, Really not much better than a four-aft full beam. Uh, so you do have to crawl over it. But holy mackerel, look at this head, you guys. Look at this head. The flooring, the countertops, real dual sinks with real space between them that the pharmacy can go on. Uh, and then a, a real shower with lots of space, its own window. Uh, you know, like I said, if I could blindfold Sylvia and take her down here and walk her around, she'd be in like Flynn, just as long as she couldn't see the outside. Okay, let us follow our guide here. I'm going to have one last peek in there. I just can't believe the size of that twin. Uh, we're back up into the saloon and just another perspective of this, having a quick look around uh, at the sheer space, you got your wine racks there, all your electronics right there. It, it is interesting to note there is no forward-facing nav station. Now, it, it, it would be a moot point in that you really can't see out the front, per se. Um, and you do have a fully enclosed flybridge, so really, what's the point? Uh, here we are in uh, the aft, um, uh, fore-aft berth. Uh, you again, it's full beam mattress, and it, that really doesn't give you any access up either side. So uh, you really need to be careful, uh, you know, as far as utilization of space. This is a big boat. I don't quite get why I can't get some access up either side. Walking, da walking down the, the hull, you can see again, you got massive space. You have uh, another mid cabin here, another massive head. I mean, for side hull heads, these are absolutely spectacular. Um, there is your thwart ship uh, forward berth, um, lots of stowage space. I don't like open shelves, but, but there you go. Um, and then another head, another beautiful um, um, four peak. Uh, double. You've got um, inboard windows as well as outboard windows. Obviously, that's an escape hatch as well. Um, but, you know, given that this is your four peak room, this is your bathroom that you're going to utilize. It's huge. Uh, you know, the, the shapes and everything are so unconventional because you're not used to those, uh, th th this kind of uh, a, a hull or, or deck shape. Uh, so you really got to wrap your head around where all of these spaces and crooks and crannies are. But, I mean, wow, what a vessel. So what do we compare this to on the pre-owned market? Well, let's have a quick look. First up, we are looking at a 2021, a one-year-old, uh, actually two-year-old, Bally 5.4. They are looking for one point. 525 tax included. 
Now, for our sail away on the Majestic, um, we simply took the base and added 100,000 US to come up with a sail away, sail away price, a real sail away price of 1.95 million. Uh, so we're looking at 1.95 for the 570 versus uh, 1.525 for a two year old um, Bally 5.4. Um, you know, 400 grand. Uh, I, I love the solidity of the Majestic 570, <clears throat> um, but the Bally's not a bad boat. I, I, I'd have to save the 400 and go with the, um, the Bally. Next up, we are looking at a 2021, so a two-year-old boat. Uh, it's a Fountain Peugeot uh, Samana 59. Uh, and they are looking for 2.85 versus our 1.95. Um, the Samana 59 is an absolutely stunning vessel. Probably, uh, you, you know, it's, it's in a different class than the 570, although, you know, it's, it's not that much bigger. Um, if I had the bucks, I'd do the Samana. But uh, if, if I'm looking at practical use, uh, it would be uh, the 570. Next up, we're looking at a 2019, uh, that's a um, two, three-year-old boat. Um, it's a uh, Leopard 58. Uh, talk about massive boat. Um, and, and I would sort of put this in the same category with the Majestic 570, although aesthetically uh, the 58 is, is much prettier. Having said that, the interior of the 570 lays the leopard to shame. Um, so they're looking at 1.7 versus our uh, 1.95 for a brand new Majestic. Um, the, the tennis court sized um, flybridge on this 58, uh, and if you get the, uh, the full main floor, open main floor, is so spectacular, even with the lower quality materials, I'd probably save the, uh, the 250 and, and go the Leopard. Next up would be a 2021 two-year-old Outremer 5X. Uh, and we're looking at uh, 2.290 versus 1.950. Um, on this one, there's no doubt I do the Outremer 5X. Um, you know, admittedly, I'm paying a, a dear price in space, uh, but the the technical capabilities, uh, even I cannot deny it of an Outremer 5X. Uh, there's, it's big enough that it makes up somewhat for the lack of space. Uh, and um, I'm geeky enough that uh, I would love the chance to learn to utilize the blessings of an Outremer 5X. Next up is the... Um, 2021, so a two-year-old Moon 60. They're looking for two and a half versus two. Um, I, 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 I'd, I'd probably do the Moon if I had the half mil, but I wouldn't cry if I didn't, and I'd get the 570. Okay, monohull heresy for all you cat lovers who can't stand the idea of a monohull. Let's see what we're comparing to. Again, we're adding 20% to the length of the uh, comparable catamaran to allow for a uh, reasonable comparison of livability space. So we're looking at stuff in the 65 to 70 foot range here. And our first up is a 2018, so a, a, a five-year-old four-year-old um, boat, uh, CNB 66, 70-foot boat. They're looking for 2067000 uh, No, I'd do the Majestic 570 in a heartbeat. Uh, next up, we are looking at a 2019. Uh, so that is a three-year-old boat. Uh, and we are, it's 69 feet, it's a Hansa 675, you know I love this boat. Uh, they're looking for 1.6, uh, in a heartbeat, I would convince Sylvia to live with the healing, assuming that I had the guts and capability to actually um, shorthand a, a vessel of this magnitude, and I'd do the Hansa. 
Next up, we are looking at a 2018, um, so a four-year-old uh, Genoa 64, uh, and they're asking 2.3. Doesn't take a Philadelphia lawyer to know that that would be my boat, uh, not not the Majestic. I'd save the uh, seven, six, six and a half, and uh, uh, I don't know. Buy, uh, buy, buy, buy some counseling for Sylvia when she didn't like the healing. Um, okay, let's move on to the Dave score. So we have done a lot of freaking yachts. Where's the 570 end up? Well, it, you know, again, new wine in an old wineskin. Time to get a new mold, guys. You have capabilities and finish work and ideas that that are really outstanding but uh you know the the look of that thing is just it's it's just not there now maybe there are others who are more practical than me but uh for me it's not there uh so we're looking at um elegance on the uh interior uh i i the six is a little low i'd probably go with seven the, the problem is that the exterior and its lines encroach on the elegance of the interior. Um, and there's no way around it. So maybe I was a little harsh here. It maybe should be a seven. Exterior, a six. Uh, um, I mean, I was probably kind there. So I guess between the two of them, we're, we're fine. Uh, comfort on the interior, uh, a seven. Um, again, all those crooks and crannies, the full um, uh, hull-to-hull uh, mattresses with no access up the sides it made a, a big boat feel relatively small. Uh, so interior comfort, uh, you know, a seven. Exterior comfort, uh, a, a seven. There's just so much more you could do with all that real estate. Um, then lazy sailor, it's a seven. You know, everything comes back to the helm. A uh, condo, it's an eight. It's you can't get over the sheer size and space. Uh, geek, it's a six. There's not much geeky here other than that uh, aft uh, uh, dinghy platform. And value for money, I, I, I'd give it a seven. I'd give it a seven. So we end up at, um, you know, a 68 out of 100, putting it right in there with, a, you know, a Nutramare 51 and the Dufours and the excess and the Ccat uh, 37, that sort of thing. Again, trading sheer size for, for, for some of the other uh, elements that appeal to me. For our Art of the Region pairing today, we're enjoying Makiwa Matomba, Children in a Red Boat. Makiwa Matomba was born in 1976 in Zimbabwe. He attended various urban schools around the country until university level. However, in 1999, when he had completed three years of university studies in electronic engineering, Makiwa abandoned his studies to follow his dream of becoming an artist. I'll talk about a shift. Now, based in South Africa, he has exhibited numerous art galleries in South Africa, Germany, London, France, India, and the USA. Well, there's our waves, wine, art, and ideas for this week. I do hope you've enjoyed them. Hope I wasn't too hard on the the external looks of our Majestic 570, but I, I really admire uh, things that this group is doing and some of the innovations they have. And, and I really think it's time for a new wine skin for that wonderful new wine they've got going on there. Anyways, we've got another future yacht episode for you next week that I think you're going to enjoy. So stay tuned and we'll see you then. Cheers. <laughs>